Hello fellow woodworkers, both standard and metric. I have a question for both of you. So I'm working on updating my Paul total station plans for myself. I'm not sure if there's going to be new plans, but I've got to build myself a new set. As you know, the awesome Paul total station that I've only had one of, it was a prototype, went away with the awesome rolling toolbox and my workflow has been extremely disrupted and I've had to sort of cobble together things. Well, I need to build one and, but rather than rushing down there, I'm going to be doing it out of this lightweight Moreland plywood. Uh, I think I'm going to use some T track this time, uh, that I got from, I'll put a link to this company, Woodbine Company. This is Clampy System. I got eight foot stuff, really tough to find. A uh, pretty good price too. I really like this stuff. So I'm going to use this uh, on the total station. And from another video, you know that I'm, I'm working with FastCap on developing an aluminum um, fence. They've already got one, but this with no back on it, uh, which is mandatory for my workbenches for how I work because I like to slide wood and use the whole bench and anytime you have thing protruding above the top, you know, it's a, it's a, not going to work for me. So with all of that, I'm trying to fine tune it so that I can build the, the, the um, extensions and everything in the shop and be done with it. But in the future, if an all aluminum track comes out, I can just pop the other one off and pop the new one or the, the more expensive, nice aluminum on. So, and it'll give you guys an option as well. At least you can watch the videos and see how I do it. So here's the question. I'm making a few adjustments. And so I'm just roughing together the plan uh, or the model. This isn't really a plan, just enough for me to build in, my, in the shop because obviously when I build it, I'm gonna find all kinds of bugs and make adjustments and end up with a prototype again, as I always do. So here is the metric standard question. I design all of my workbenches in standard and then I provide all that dimensioning and then on the same set of plans I have another page which I convert to metric. Standard does not smoothly convert to metric or the other way around. Here's an example. My bench is conveniently six foot long, three feet wide. If I go in here and I switch it to, let's go decimal millimeters and we'll take it to out two decimal points, 18, 28.80. Not really good if you do metric. It's, you're gonna round it to 29. So I'll probably take it 1829, but that doesn't make it exactly, you know, it's off a little bit and you start doing multiple things and you add them up and you're off an eight, uh, point 0.2 here, point 0.1 there. In, in the cabinetry world and the CNC world, everything is metric. I learned this with the fast cap Polk compact bench, which is different than the plans for the Polk compact bench. I had to switch the one there for the CNC to 96 millimeter spacing on the holes instead of four inch. Now I went to 20 millimeter holes. I used to do three quarter and now all my benches that I build and any plans that I do in the future will all be 20 millimeter. The, the Paul compact bench is 20 millimeter and the Paul toll station has always been 20 millimeters. The jig I showed you how to build so you can make them as all 20 millimeter. The Paul workbench two is still showing the plans with three quarter, but I tell everybody Hey, if you haven't cut the holes yet, go ahead and do them 20 millimeter. It just makes sense. But the spacing from four inch to 96 millimeter came about because in CNC machines, the blocks are based on the 32 millimeter system. So if we wanted to have multiple bits in there, say four Forstner bits, so we could drill four holes at once instead of, you know, one at a time, which, you know, that means your CNC machine is working no faster than an individual they're 96 millimeters apart. So we had to go from four to 96. So I've decided on all of the benches that I have that I've built for myself in the future, I'm gonna do that. Now that doesn't lay out on a six foot 
perfectly. So I create a center line here and do my holes from the center right and the center left. And that leaves me with about two inches in from the edges, but it gives me that perfect 96 millimeter spacing. And I'll give you an example here, a little, you know, uh, lesson in SketchUp, which I've done this before, but I'll show you how I did this. So I'll go into here and I'll grab these holes, these 20 millimeter holes. I'm going to hit the M key for move, tap the option key, find the center. And the way you find the center is you touch the edge and then you come in and it'll snap right to center. And then I've just clicked on it. I'm moving it over. It doesn't matter where I put it. I'm going to type in 96 mm and it'll drop it right there. Now, while I'm there before I do anything else, I'm just going to simply put X uh, nine or 10. So we'll try nine. Perfect. So, and then I would erase these holes here because they're out in the middle. And then I'm going to go in and um, center up like the, the dado for the slide for the router um, accessories. I'm going to center that between the 96s. I'm going to move this over and center it between the 96s both ways. So I'm going to get everything laid out and lay this out, um, which I've already fixed this up. So it's centered in the set point. And, these holes here aren't quite done yet and I haven't finished down here, but you can see what I'm doing. So it's all based on the 32 millimeter system. So three times 32 is 96. And you know, if you're into cabinetry, whether you build US cabinets or Euro boxes, all the hardware is based off 32. The holes are five millimeter holes, 32 millimeters center to center. Uh, the, the high, you know, there, there's variations on the system, but if you want to make it, the way it's designed, the, the 32 millimeter, the cabinet heights are, are a multiple of 32 so that you can take a right or a left, it doesn't matter. Um, flip it over, it works on both sides. You don't put feet on the lower boxes or you don't, you don't build in toe kicks, you add those later. So your boxes, you know, really clean efficient system and any hardware you buy, the drawer glides, the, uh, hinges, any of that stuff, it all fits and works in the 32 millimeter system. In fact, the holes in the front of your cabinet, the spacing to the holes in the back of your cabinet, doesn't matter if it's a wide cabinet or a narrow cabinet, the, the distance between the front holes and the back holes is a multiple of 32. It just so happens that front row from the front edge of the cabinet is set back 37 millimeters. So it's a really good system and it works even if you're building American style face frame cabinets. Again, the hardware works. So I thought about two questions. Now here, a long ramble to say, here's the question for both my metric and my standard guys. First question, if I design it in metric, it won't be six feet. It'll be something slightly off of that. Would you be okay with that if I just showed metric dimensions on the whole plan and we just forgot standard and you just pull out your metric tape and you build it metric and you know it's very precise, good numbers. You know, if we start fussing around with fractions, we go from you know eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, thirty seconds and then sixty-fourth of an inch, you know, you get you know where it's we all know what it is, it's a sixteenth heavy or sixteenth light. Metric is a, is a little more precise and easier and the, and the tapes work really well. So with my standard guys, and I, I'm not all sure who that is. I know the US, maybe England, and I'm not sure about Australia, but I got a couple guys in Australia, carpenters in Australia that I follow, and they're always talking feet and inches, and I was surprised about that. So anyway, number two um, would be what about making the bench instead of six feet or the metric equivalent a multiple of 32? I'm not sure that would help in any way, but basically I've done that over here with this one just to kind of test it out. And so basically I went from one edge to the other and this is a multiple of 32. And if I go back and convert this back to architectural and we go to inches and I go to say 16th, um, you can see that the overall length is six foot one and a 16th and the overall width is three foot nine and 
or three foot and nine sixteenths. And that may not be exactly right yet because I got to get the spacing for this T track, which is going to go right in there instead of making my own the way I did on the on the other pop tool station. So, but it still be really, really close to this. So the two questions, my standard guys, how would you feel if it were only available in metric? You've built the whole thing on a metric. And number two, what about making it a multiple of 32? The holes are going to be that whether I lay them out from the center and we know two inches on the edge or whether I go with the six foot one and the 16th or in metric here and make it so it's exactly a multiple of 32. So two questions, all metric, no standard dimensions. We all build it the same way. And two, do you see any advantage to laying it out on 32. This little bit longer kind of hurts me because I got a spot in my trailer that's six feet. So hang on, I'm not going to remodel and, and move cabinets. So I, it'll fit, but it's going to, you know, not be as nice and nice looking in there when I've got it loaded. Also, I got guys that want to load them in trucks and things and with that one foot and a 16th or one in one 16th of an inch make that big of a difference. And if I'm not so sure that having it on 32 millimeter spacing would add any advantage. We're going to be the 20 millimeter holes, the 96 millimeter spacing, laying these out perfectly like CNC machines. You can use bench dogs in there to square and things. We'll be able to do that either way. I just don't know, you know, if we're doing cabins and stuff, is there any advantage to, to being able to set up bench dogs in one hole and know that, you know, these are your your bases are all this and have a bench dog for using track saws and stuff that you can just use the same holes every time. I could see a little bit of there, but I, I'm not so sure that I would do it that way. I'm probably still going to use my crosscut jig for that. Um, and uh, so anyway, that's the, the two questions. Please answer them in the comment section down below because I'd rather have a dialogue getting emails, individual emails, it's really tough to answer. Just too many come in and I wouldn't get anything done if I was answering every email. So let's have a dialogue in the comments down below. If you want a set of Polk Total Station plans, the Polk Workbench, the miter stand, the stand-up desk, or the awesome rolling toolbox, you can click on the link right here in the video somewhere or in the description down below. And also, if you like these videos and you want me to keep making them and you want to support the channel, but you don't want to send me any money, you can use my Amazon link. And I put tools in there that I actually use and like. And if you buy them there from Amazon, they'll kick us a little spiff without charging you any extra. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch. Keep your eyes open for me to build the Pulp Total Station. I got to get down to the shop and you'll get to see the whole thing with this Moreland Ultralight Plywood. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And also I got a secret tool that I'm gonna tell you about. It was actually sent to me to make these 20 millimeter holes absolutely precision, just like I had a CNC machine, but I get to do it with a battery operated drill. Really cool tool. Like I said, they saw me doing this and said, hey, we got a tool. We wanna to send it to you, try it out. So I haven't used it yet, but you'll get to see it and it's going to be pretty cool. All right. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch. You all have a great day. See you soon.